Welcome to another episode of At The Bar Podcast. I am your host, as always, Mike. And joining me today, as always, as always, Jeff, is Hollywood. Jeff for Hollywood. We're here recording live once again, like all the other episodes, at World of Beer UCF. Yeah, that's, this is a very that's unique, home to us. This is a very unique episode you guys are about to listen to. It's Jeff's idea. I'm just going to go right into it. Yeah. It was Jeff's idea. Jeff has been pressing me for... About a month and a half. I've really wanted to do this a lot. I, I think it's going to be fun, so we'll see. So finally, we got down the line of topic ideas to now we're at this one. <laughs> we so burned through enough we of burned, them. <laughs> yeah. So Jeff, tell us what we're doing. All right. So what uh, what I wanted to do is, is actually back, remember, if you guys do follow the show, when I went on to uh, down to the Funky Buddha Maple Bacon Coffee Porter Day. So I came back with a handful of bombers, and I wanted to see if we could do an infusion battle episode. Um Hey, Heather. Hey. So what we're going to do is uh, we both have had maple bacon, uh, not, a, not a bunch of times, but we've had it before. We wanted right. to take a base porter, which we used, um, Founders Porter. We thought that was a very nice base porter with not too many uh, pre-existing flavors in it. And we did not discuss our infusion methods or our ingredients we were going to use, and we're trying to infuse a porter to taste as close to maple bacon coffee porter as possible. Correct. And then we're battling it out to see who's reigns supreme. So we had a rule, no extract. No extract. And we had to spend under 20 bucks, which Correct. we both spent exactly $10. Yeah, we spent $10, so we should have made the rule of $10. No, we did that. <laughs> <laughs> That's coincidence. So we were joined by... A long time fan of the show, Heather. <laughs> yes, one of one of <laughs> our first shows. One. Yeah, one of our one. first fans of the show. Hey, Heather. Hi. How are you? Welcome. Doing? Thank you. Are you are excited to uh, try the disaster that's about to happen? Amazed and thrilled. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be. I think you're gonna be the only unbiased judge. We might have Darren pop by too to go. judge a little bit. But um, yeah, how, I mean, how do we want to do it? I, I, we have we'll do, our beers already infused and ready to go. Yep. We'll do we'll do mine first since mine is uh, not on ice right now. Okay, so we'll just intro the beer, what you did, how yep. you did it, and what infusion method yep. you used. So what I did, my infusion method was the Randall method, and those people who are into this into the craft beer scene knows Dogfish had created a infuser called called the Randall. So pretty much what I did was I chopped up beef jerky. <laughs> why I don't know, <laughs> but I did it, and. Cause I hate I hate cooking, so that's why I did it. He's, you know, I took the easy way out. So I got five one ounce jerky sticks. I got one smoke, smoked beef to help me give me a, a coffee flavor. One buffalo original, which I don't know where I was going with that, but I got it. <laughs> um, it looked good. It looked good, yeah. And then I got three maple beef jerky that had used duck meat. So I don't know if the meat is gonna play into how my beer turns out. But I, I went with more maple because maple yeah. is such a, a soft character in beer. Yeah. So, I mean, I, when you told me about it, I thought it sounded like it could work. It's going to have a lot of maple probably of the maple syrup in the – I mean, it, however they made the jerky, it should right. come through. And then uh, the meat is going to play into that little bit of bacon note that you probably get. I hope so. And, and then – I mean, we'll see. It. We, we haven't, haven't tried, tried it. it. We haven't tried either of ours yet. We've only smelt them. They both smell good. Mine's very good. jerky. And I'm, I'm a, you know, accepting of it. I'm okay with it. <laughs> The good news is whether both of ours suck or not, we do have an actual bottle of maple bacon afterwards for us to drink. So right. we'll have See a good time wins. either way. Right. So uh, I guess mine's is up. We did filter mine through a coffee filter because there was a whole bunch of <laughs> you shit had in some it. Funk? We were going to yeah. have some actual beef jerky beer. <laughs> yeah. That actually sounds like a With a chunk of jerky delicious. in it. I, I <laughs> wouldn't put honest. it past us, man. We love our weird beers. Me, uh... Just give it a quick one. If you go quick, it won't spill. Whatever. We don't rehearse this. What? <laughs> All right. So mine's is poured. Everyone, close enough. Close enough. Close Nobody's going to get too angry about there it. There you go, Heather. So, yeah, the nose the nose does smell a lot like beef so jerky. We're going to mine. I don't have a name for it. This is my the, the beef jerky, <laughs> jerky maple porter. So it's it, it's we super. We call it the jerk. Mike's a jerk beer. When it oh <laughs> Mike's a jerky. I like Acha. it. You gonna insert I'll, I'll the, that, the yeah. rim shot on yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, you definitely smell this it's really. A lot smoky, of beef jerky, smoky. very smoky. Yeah. yeah. Which is uh, it's not a bad thing, but you know that's kind of what maple bacon porter is. It reminds me of like the smoky sausages. You remember those? Mm -hmm. The little yeah. 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 We ready so. to dive in? I mean, what else you guys get? I get, I mean, nothing but. I get, so I get the jerky, but I do get a little bit of like a sweet 
character in the smell yeah. too, which I do think is the maple coming through. Sure. Hopefully it comes through very strong in the taste. Maple bacon does have a ton of maple yeah. flavor, so we'll see. I hope it comes through. All right, cheers everybody. Cheers. Very salty. Yeah. Very, very salty. Yeah. It's it tastes like beef jerky. All, all I smell. Yeah. I mean, all I taste. Yeah. Salty as fuck. <laughs> salty as fuck. I don't think I get any maple. I get flavor. nothing. Yeah. I get nothing. Damn. I was expecting the sweetness because it is a little bit on the nose. But yeah, I do get a, a lot. So this was a strikeout. A little bit of salt or a lot of salt. A lot of salt. <laughs> it's like ocean water salt. Which, I mean, it's expected. I did use fucking five ounces of jerky <laughs> yeah. in a 12-ounce beer. I mean, yeah, I guess that's kind of, wow, that, that's actually, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of ounces for the beer. Yeah, whatever. You live and you learn, right? Well, that's the part of the infusion thing. You don't know what you're going to get until you do it and yeah. try it. I've done a lot of infusions at World of Beer that have worked out, and I've done a lot that have not worked yeah. out. You know, you think something's going to impart a lot of flavor, and then it doesn't, and it's kind of the fun of, the, of doing it. The whole so, Randall is a tricky thing. I yeah. Mean, Sometimes it sits on there and it pulls all the flavors out that you expect. And then sometimes it's just like, what happened? Yeah. And there's, and I've learned through doing it, there's a lot of items that you would think would put a ton of flavor in that don't put any. And then there's a ton of things that you would think are going to do nothing and they come through like crazy. Um, It's just a matter of pairing the right items together and making it work. So in terms of information, I did did put the the jerky in the beer at 1030 this morning. So about seven hours we're we're at now. So it, it sat in there for... Seven hours. It's almost undrinkable. It's really salty. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Whatever. <laughs> it's Jeff, on a scale from one, no, we're not going to go there. <laughs> this is a, a one. A one? Yeah, this is a one. I was going to give it more than a one. I w- this is bad, dude. It's hard to drink. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, with, with infusing, like, you just don't know what you're going to get until you do it. And, like, right. now that it tastes as salty as it does, I'm like, that does make sense because jerky is, like, super. Well, and then now you could now you could tweak a recipe and, and make it less jerky if you want it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, more more maple. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. I mean, that we're, we're going after a beer that's extract. Right. Yeah. With not using extract. So it's, that you know, kind of finding that balance, you know, it's, you know, you're not going to get that on, on the one shot. Maybe not even on the second or third. Yeah. But with how shitty mine turned out, it makes me more excited to try yours. <laughs> All right. Well, we can, we can hope. I'll be honest. We can hope mine's good. We'll see. 100% transparency on this show. Okay. So mine, what I used, uh, we did, like I said, the same porter. Mine's been in uh, since about 10 a.m. as well. So we did the same amount of time infusing. That's disgusting. Um, I'm gonna dump the whole glass. Like, what I, we're not. I'm Aww. not sharing this at all. Oh, Mike. All right, I'll let people smell it. <laughs> well, Darren has to try it at least. Okay. He's not sure if he wants Darren to try. It. Whatever. <laughs> it's Darren. Who he'll, he'll think it's, beer is salty. He'll think fuck. it's funny. <laughs> anyway, so um, so we put them in for the same amount of time. What I did, um, I actually went kind of right at it with what the name of the beer is and, and tried to. I was originally gonna take out a lot of the bacon and just kind of go for coffee and maple and, and okay. try to hit those two notes. But yeah. then I, I thought of a cool way to incorporate bacon in where it might impart a little bit of flavor. So what I ended up doing was I made um, candied bacon bits that were, so I, I took bacon bits, I coated them in maple syrup and then um, brown sugar and coffee grounds and baked them and threw them in the freezer. So I made some candied bacon bits. Then I took vanilla beans and soaked them in maple syrup for 24 hours. Wow and then put that all into one of the dogfish head, one single beer Randall things that they actually sell on their website. So um, that's been sitting (laughs) for about six hours. Uh, The candied bacon is a lot of, it tastes a lot of coffee. I I think it's gonna impart a lot of coffee flavor. I'm hoping that the vanilla didn't just completely overpower because there's not a ton of vanilla in maple bacon, but I hope it absorbed a lot of maple syrup because I didn't really, besides coating the bacon bits in maple and then soaking vanilla in maple, I didn't, put maple syrup actually in it in anything so we'll see if it comes out i smelt it i thought it smelt good but i don't really know what it's going to taste like i mean the good thing is you're going up against essentially nothing so i mine's a little cloudy (laughs) (laughs) do we need to filter yours too (laughs) probably but that took like 10 minutes to filter through it's all good all the stuff that's in here is edible (laughs) so jeff is pouring his out of his randall a lot That's of sediment. The coolest thing. We're getting some sediment, which is good. 
Jeff likes his sediment. I do love sediment, so I'm all right with that. <laughs> Jeff and his um, schmutz. No, actually, have you have you seen this? So no, I was. Let me put the top admiring. back on so that. I was wondering I why you had the water it's pretty cool. bottle it's, upside it's down. It's twenty. It's like, twenty dollars. So it's basically a dual compartment system. You unscrew the top, and there's a filter underneath it. You can put all the ingredients in it, and then screw that back on and then flip it over and it infuses over time then you just unscrew the second screw and it opens up the glass to drink so it's a simple system but it's pretty cool and yeah this is only the second time i've ever used it so i don't even know yeah, I get one real bad. how it's gonna work but yeah okay um, so i've been holding we'll this down here at like chest level and i'm already smelling coffee okay yeah, this is very coffee yeah. it's i get i know we, we smelt out of the randall you you got it smelled good but out of the, the snifter like you get a lot more coffee a lot of coffee yep I get, you know, a candy, brown sugar-ness to it. It's it's a sweet You win on coffee. the, um, you're going to win on every category. It's not going to matter. <laughs> I mean, you could have put it, uh, you could have done anything. Just salt? Yeah, yeah. yeah just put salt. it smells like coffee that you've got, you know, sugar like, and. Yeah, it smells it's like kind morning of, coffee. It's, yeah. yeah, well, that's, I mean, it's a morning beer. So exactly. hopefully yeah. it tastes like breakfast. I don't know. I'm not right. sure if I'm hope. catching bacon, though. No, Which you I'm would getting think a lot with of the coffee, bits, brown sugar, yeah, molasses. Or bacon. I'm not going to be the first one to speak because it's my beer. So I'm going to let you guys Jeff know. wins. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. It's really tasty. It's really sweet, though. It's very sweet. Yeah. I mean, I'm not opposed to sweet beers, but that's... I get a lot more sweet. maple in the taste, I think. I do, yeah. Yeah, you get you get a lot of sugaryness from it, which, I mean, is what you're going for. That's what that mm-hmm. beer is. Um, and actually, the vanilla's there, too. Yeah, I, I get mean, a But bit it's not overpowering like you were worried about. Vanilla is risky because it does overpower so much. Those be- those beans are so much more potent than they seem like they are. Yeah, vanilla. Yeah, you gotta be careful with vanilla. You get it more on the back end, kind of. You know, it kind of smooths everything out. Yeah. It almost tastes like like Nib Smuggler more a little bit. Yeah, I think. I've, I don't think I I taste the bacon really. I don't taste yeah, any no of the bacon. bacon. I taste no. a lot of coffee and a lot of maple, which is all right it's with a me. Lot of, yeah, it's a lot of coffee, and maple in the front, and then it gets really sweet towards the end. Um, yeah, it's tasty though. It's the it's complex. It's you know you got the dimensions there. So uh, I, I can't take credit. I didn't brew it. Thanks founders for brewing a good porter. <laughs> yeah, thanks founders. <laughs> I just I just put in stuff into it. So yeah, you don't get you don't get any bacon. But, but you know what? I'm gonna start. And, and this is what's cool about this. And the, really, the reason I wanted to do this is because it gave me a reason to actually start infusing a beer. Yeah. But you can buy any beer. Like we took a base porter that's like, you know. I don't want to say shelf turd because it's not. It's a great porter, but it's one on, of the best in the country. It's widely available. Widely available. Yep, yep. And and we turned it into something different, completely different, to the point like whether or not yours is good or not, it, it's completely different than what it was. And all yeah. we did was just put stuff in it and leave yeah. it there for a few hours. Like, so that's why I wanted to do it because now I could go by the liquor store and instead of waiting until last snow comes out, why don't I try getting some, you know. Really coffee and, and some and yourself, some coconut and level. get a porter yeah. and throw it in together and, and see if I can make something delicious at home. Yeah, no, I really like this idea. When you, I know when you pitched it to me, I was kind of like, oh yeah, ha, 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 like let's do it. But like, I like how you can change a beer and like right. it doesn't take a lot of work. Because this is nothing like the original porter. No, no, and yours is definitely nothing like the original porter. Absolutely not. It's one of a kind. <laughs> one of a kind. It's very special. <laughs> Thank yeah. God. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. That so, won't be released. Again. So do we want to crack the real maple bacon and see what it's yeah, man. how it compares? Absolutely. So the good thing is, you know, I, I want to do more of these shows. I, I think I'm going to get a random. My birthday oh, is like, so good. My birthday. I'm turning 28 in eight days. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I am. So I want to, I might get a Randall for myself and we can have Randall offs. <laughs> a new segment. It could That's, be yeah. a beer battle Randall off. Seems like it's something dirty. Is it dirty? <laughs> I don't know. You tell us. <laughs> That would be funny if there's a guy on the show called Randall. Named Randall, exactly. <laughs> oh, we'll find an old we'll Randy. We'll find a Randall. We'll find Randall a Randy. Randy. Well, I mean, look at that. Oh, feel free to pour it in there. Uh, <laughs> no, that's okay. I'm not going to waste a drop. So Jeff's pouring uh, <laughs> copious amounts of MBCP. Almost just overflowed the glass, but almost. Almost. So this, so the that nose was the on perfect this pour. <laughs> just uh, obnoxiously maple. Yeah. Yeah. It's all maple. Oh, my gosh. Now, this is the most I've had of maple bacon ever, which is, what are these, the five-ounce glasses? Five ounces. I had three ounces the first time I've ever had it. I, God, that's why I, I ended up ha- I trying love this it beer. twice when it came out on draft over the last You're dripping. Release. You're dripping. Ah. Ah. We got oh, nothing. 
alcohol abuse. Napkins. <laughs> That's okay. We're so, good. Um, it's nothing but maple. That's it. On the on the. Smell. I love it. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about the beer. No. I was like, I love I oh, love this beer. Steps, Jeff. Steps. So we're gonna go in for the uh, the real stuff here. It tastes different out of the bottle than it did non draft. Yeah. Very different. There's a lot more maple out of the bottle. It was more coffee on draft, I think. Yeah. But you know, I honestly, I don't taste a lot of bacon in this either. No. To be no. honest. Not really. It's, it's not the same like flavor as yours, but in terms of the bacon presence, I don't know that there's that much of a difference. We're going to have to ask the Buddha about how much bacon. They, I, I they, think they I think they put the bacon in there because of the smokiness because there is a little bit of smoky kind of but that could be con, could that could be the coffee. Too, yeah, yeah. I'm curious. I, to, the, the coffee's in the back end. The maple's right up front there. Right. Oh yeah. But yeah. I just like it because it is one of those beers. It's it's very complex for what it is. You get uh, the whole kind of transition from Darren, the maple to the bitter. Darren, I don't have a. Ooh, don't Darren's have a mic here. Yeah. You, you got to try that. It's the best one. Better than his. Yeah. Buy buy a landslide. <laughs> he just shook his head. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, very salty. Very, well, here I got some left over for so you. So now that Darren has I had know. this, <laughs> we're go the other way. <laughs> My beer sucks. That yeah. was very, very salty. As expected, I guess. So yeah, I mean. Okay, I want to. I want to actually try Jeff's. And Funky Buddha is side by side. I'm just curious. I, I mean, mean, obviously, it's mine's a better. So but I don't. Yes, of course. Sorry, Funky. I I killed it. I like your coffee more than theirs. I significantly. We more. use Terrapin's coffee. <laughs> what? We use the jittery, use the jittery oh. Joes uh, from the Terrapin <laughs> Randall the other day. So we actually use Terrapin's coffee to clone a. I like I like the coffee a, a lot more. I. Their taste bitter I like mine. I, try it I like yours. mine better. Yeah. Yours is a lot sweeter than theirs. I agree with that. Yeah. <clears throat> but I. Mm, mm. Way sweeter. I prefer it though. Eh? Personally, yeah. Yeah. It's sweeter and the coffee is, uh, tastes better. Like it's just a better quality coffee than the maple bacon. Yeah, the Jittery Joe's is actually really good coffee. I don't know where to get it, but it's good. Yeah. So. Athens, Georgia. Probably in Athens. <laughs> I would guess. <laughs> yeah. It's a sour note. So Jeff, Darren how do you how do you think you did Athens. compared to uh, the king, the maple bacon? How do you think you did? I I think I did good. Uh, I mean, I I keep making jokes that it's better. I don't know that it's better. I don't think it's better. It's but it's comparable. I think I got pretty close to the flavors. A little bit sweeter. Yeah. But all the flavors that are in maple bacon are there. I prefer yours. Really? Yeah. Um, I always lean towards sweeter beers, uh, as we all know. Um, and I just do like the coffee in yours is just. I got I think lucky. Makes a difference. I got lucky. I actually hand ground the coffee because I didn't have a coffee grinder, so I actually took it. Like mortar and pestle, or. Yeah, I had it. Well, I had, um, I had like a, the bottom of a glass and a and a paper plate and just sat there and ground it up. Yeah, yours. Yeah, yours is more like breakfast. You know, Sunday morning, you wake up, read the paper. I think mine is very much like maple syrup with a cup of coffee. Whereas, like, theirs is maple, but it's not like maple syrup. It's a little bit bit more bitter. Yeah. No, it's definitely more bitter. Yeah. Bitterer. More bitter? That's that's my my opinion. I like like Jeff's a little bit more. I like that mine is available to me anytime I want it to be. (laughs) (laughs) There's that. Yeah. (laughs) Heather, what are you thinking? Um... I have to say, I still like Funky Buddha's better. Okay. But I also, they're they're just different. They they stand alone. They're each both of them really on good. Their own merits. Yeah. They're both really. I like both, but I love this beer. This I think is one the of coffee my on Jeff sets it a little bit above. But the Buddha. To be honest, and yeah, it's been several weeks since I had the maple bacon on draft. I like it better on draft than I do in the bottle. I'm not I'm not thrilled with the bottle taste. I I agree with you. I do. I think it's way better on draft. And that's that's another conversation of. You know, the difference between draft and bottle with what you're adding to a beer. Like, from my experiences, the more adjunct you add, the better it is on tap really? than it does in the bottle. Because of the freshness or because it just does different things to the taste in the I bottle? Think, I think just the, the, the draft adds more flavor to a beer. You know, if you ever had Blueberry Cobbler from Funky Buddha in a can, I mean, in a bottle and uh-huh. in the draft, for me, I get way more vanilla 
in a draft than compared to a bottle. Okay. Bottle, I get more like fruit to where it tastes just like a blueberry wheat. Compared from a draft, I get more of that pie aspect to it. Okay. So, I mean, that's what I'm thinking, uh, you know, with the maple bacon uh, is that dra- getting it through a draft brings more of a character out than a bottle. There's, gonna, there's a dick on there somewhere. <laughs> it's in one of the uh, the background. That's what I was thinking. It has it's to be. It's in there. I saw it. You, I mean, on this I've bottle? No, I've seen it online. Is this on like, the, on is the this maple like bacon? It's on one of the pigs. An yeah. urban legend? On, no, on, or? Uh, what? <laughs> on Nikolai Vorloff, it's in the same. It's the same thing. It's yeah. in the background in one yeah. of those little like. You didn't know what Funky Buddha does to their labels. I did not. Educate um, me. <laughs> well, let's not let's not say that they definitely do it on purpose. They they, ha- they have bitter animators who sometimes draw their yeah. occasionally and you can miss sometimes <laughs> occasionally <laughs> on every single bottle every that Funky Buddha puts out. Occasionally <laughs> there is something that resembles a penis. Now I'm going to be so, looking for it all so the time. So they say. Scapulation. Yet to be confirmed. I've we'll seen it on though. literally every bottle. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, whatever. So, I mean, what do you think about the whole bottle and draft with uh, Jeff on the uh, adjuncting? Do you get a, a, a taste quali- a difference in taste? or? I think majority of the time on draft beers taste better. And I don't know if it's because they aerate more when you pour them or if it's the fact that all of your ingredients just have time to mesh together in a bigger scale and you're pouring out of a, a, a well play. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't honestly know don't, but um, it feel, I feel like the spikes in flavor get mellowed out off draft. So you don't get a beer yeah. that's obscenely bitter or obscenely maple or like this beer is very mellow and very balanced on draft. Whereas I feel like it's a little bit more bitter out of the bottle. So yeah. I don't know if it's because you're segmenting different, you know, parts of when you when you bottle it. There's, you know, obviously different parts of the fermentation tanks and everything. I don't know if you're getting the best parts and the worst parts and they're segmented or if it's all blended. I don't know how it works, but typically I like draft better than bottle. It could also be that a keg is essentially a big can. A can protects it from light, protects it from oxidization. Before you tap that beer, there's no oxygen in the keg. It's all CO2. So I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. I, you I'm know, not, I'm not 100 percent sure. I have reasons, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Not, I don't know enough to even say on air. But see, now there are other beers. I mean, um, sweet potato casserole comes to mind. Funky Buddha. Way we'll better on draft. Him. Oh, see, I disagree. Way I really better. liked it better in the bottle than I did on draft. Oh, I have to agree. I thought it was better on bottle on that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Usually I don't though. Usually I side with draft. Right. But occasionally a bottle does taste better. I got. A way more like marshmallow character out of the draft than a bottle. Maybe I wasn't that looking one. as much for marshmallow. I don't know. <laughs> you know. I thought it tasted exactly like a sweet potato casserole, though. It's pretty uh, amazing. I liked it. I mean, all anything funky boot I prefer on draft. I, I don't know why. I just, I just get more flavor. I guess. I really, I just everything they put out is a, is a great beer, and that's I really like that they don't put out anything that's been a, a turd yet. Not yet. There hasn't been fart in a glass. From them, we also haven't had all their beers. I've had a, I've had a lot of their beers. I've had other beers too, but not all of them. I went down when I went down there. We went to the brewery the next day. All I drank was basically Funky Buddha beers for two straight days at the brewery and at the event. I've had a, a ton of their beers. Their tap room's legit. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Have you been Heather the Funky not Buddha? Not yet. No. It's worth. It's definitely worth the trip, and the hotel room. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I went down there a little over a year ago, and I had. Their French Guys, toast double. The rest of mine. French, French toast. Blah, 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 blah. French toast double brown. My God, Sounds my favorite, delicious. my favorite beer from them, hands down. That Neapolitan porter that tastes like strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla uh, yeah, ice cream. Yeah, you've talked about that before. I'm interested in that. Also Although, very good. Strawberry ice cream. I don't know. I don't know if it was theirs or not because I was uh, was a little intoxicated at the point when I tried it. But they have a, uh, I believe it's them, a lychee Berliner Weiss that is freaking mind-blowing so good and i hate berliner vices right and this was one of my favorite beers from maple bacon day i believe it's their beer really awesome it's just a shame that they don't they don't put this out more that you, know, you have to go to the brewery to get it or maple bacon porter day well they put out more one-offs than almost anybody it's they're putting out they're putting out stuff every few months that are you know 
different. I mean, Last Snow's the one everybody that comes to mind, but they just put out Nikolai Vorloff not that long ago. They just put out Moy Benita like last week. Um, they're putting out tons of their bombers that are in. They're always in bomber format for the most part, but they put out a ton of yeah, a ton of one offs. Stuff, yeah. I mean, we're gonna have we're gonna have blueberry cobbler coming up soon. Moro Moro, that's theirs Can't too, wait. right? Moro Moro is coming out. They redid the recipe for this year. It's back to being amazing. Yeah, I saw it in the store yesterday mm -hmm. or last weekend. Yeah, it's back to being what it was the first the first time they did it. It's freaking. I love that beer, but all their stuff is amazing. So with this episode being about Funky Buddha, the question <laughs> I'm gonna ask is: it, Is Funky the new king of Florida? I would say in, in terms of craft beer, it just depends what <laughs> circle and what market. Um, down south, yes. Well, they Tampa, oh, oh, no. we, we said that what episode three that Funky Buddha owns South Florida. Yeah, South Florida is. I mean, we were saying it earlier, not on the air, but we were saying it earlier about uh, Funky Buddha has this mystique around them now, where they're almost uh, to the point where if you traveled to South Florida and you're from out of the state, you need to go there if you're a craft beer person. Right. You know, like like they have that same mystique and and don't is everybody's gonna jump all over me for saying this, but I said like it's like three Floyds. It's like when you go to Chicago, you know you need to go there. Right, or if you go to Tampa, you know you, you need go to go cigars. to Cigar City. Yeah. It's like when you go to when you go to Miami, you know you got to take the shot up to Fort Lauderdale and go to Funky Buddha. It's like right. it, you just they're out, they're at that level where they're well known even around the country, even though they only distribute in one state. So they're doing very well. Are they only distributing in Florida? I believe so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we own them. <laughs> yeah. For now. For now. I mean, Funky. I mean, I showed Jeff before the show that we went out on. Uh, I went on Beer Advocate and looked up the best porters in the country in terms of beer advocate rating mm -hmm. and funky buddha has three of the top six yeah and last snow is not number one last snow snowed in La uh it was morning wood was the best morning wood. in terms morning of wood. beer advocate yep. ratings morning wood was first i think last night was third and then another uh maple bake i think was six so so they know their, their, their porter in. game is strong mm. and and i mean there's breweries i think hills farmstead had the second best Porter, and they're one of the best breweries in the country, you know, unanimously. Right. You know, if you could get Hills Farmstead, they're only out of Vermont, only at the brewery. Like, you can't get them really anywhere uh, else. So let's just so let, they that, have, yeah, let they that, have that sink in of Funky Buddha being having three of the best six porters, according to people who drink it. Right. <laughs> Not just two guys behind a microphone that meet every Thursday at World Beer UCF. Just to drink. Just to drink and have people on. Yeah, we think we're the, we think we're so important that we need everybody to hear us. Yeah, this actually just was us having bar conversations, and then we're like, everybody should hear us talk. Yeah, yeah. essentially. <laughs> let's do a podcast. Yeah, let's, let's do this. Yeah, because we know what we're talking about. We're crap. You're experts. Expert. I'm just kidding. We're enthusiasts. <laughs> let's not get too PC here, guys. Aficionados. Come yeah. on. Let's, let's yeah. make it. Let's make it. Snooty. Listen, we passed beer school, all right? We know everything. <laughs> so Jeff. Yes. It's the PIA. Plug it anywhere. Time. Just like in every episode. Um, all right. I finally Where are you plugging it? I finally have done it. I've plugged this now four times, I believe, but I've finally have actually done it. We are officially on for this homebrew festival at our store. Ooh. It's gonna be June twenty fifth. You can buy mm -hmm. tickets online at Eventbrite. You can also buy tickets at the store. Um, homebrewers, if you're listening, go to the uh, go to our Facebook page, find the event, it'll show you how to reserve your spot it's free to home brewers to come and be represented you get the chance to win uh, a chance to go brew with red cypress to brew a collaboration beer that will be possibly a wab exclusive but definitely will be on tap at ultima and ucf and red cypress's tap room and uh it's gonna be big it's gonna be a really awesome event i'm excited uh, yeah we'll be here i mean i will be here drinking my face off <laughs> I'll be here drinking. And your by that face I mean I'm too. gonna be I'm gonna be running the event, so I probably won't get to drink too much, but we'll see. He says that now, Heather. And how much your tickets? They're twenty dollars. So to come, it's an unlimited samples from such a great deal. From three to six o'clock, unlimited samples from the home brewers, and then we're gonna take an hour to calculate everybody's votes and then announcing the winners at seven o'clock. Top three home brewers get a prize, but the number one prize is gonna be that collaboration. Cool. Any particular style or any style you want? We're doing any style. Yeah, I wanted to give them. A, I wanted to give them enough time to brew. So um, at this moment, they'll have enough time to brew most styles. Bring uh, out your whales. By the time we By the time we release this, 
you, if you're signing up now, you might only get to do like a wheat beer or something. But no, this will be out in like two weeks. Okay, well, then yeah, you'll, you'll have, have you'll have time. You'll have time. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you can brew any style you want. We're just gonna do community pick who who the best is. We're gonna calculate all the votes and see who wins. So, cool. um, it's gonna be fun. I, I'm excited for it. And I, to be honest with you, we just kind of had this idea. We were spitballing it, and we thought, wouldn't it be cool? Everybody wants to support local, but local's so big now. Like, right. is it Florida? Is it your local area? Everybody has a billion breweries around them. I was like, the people who still are brewing for the love of the beer are the home brewers. Let's let's highlight them for a day and, and then give them a chance to get a beer on tap at World of Beer. Yeah. I mean, it's a good idea. I'm, I'm really excited for it, too. And, I mean, we'll be here. Yeah. We'll have our own tent. Mm-hmm. Probably right next to Ryan. We'll be judging, too. Sipping Correct. on beers. Mingling. We'll probably do an episode before the event starts. Yeah, we'll probably interview a handful of the home brewers and, and yeah. talk shop. So we'll be here. Mike and Jeff from At the Bar Podcast will be here. Number one craft beer podcast in Orlando. Whoop whoop. Heather, what do you want to plug? Um, gosh, what can I plug? Uh, anything. World anything. <laughs> anywhere. 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 <laughs> Just don't go in the Prius. World of Beer UCF Brothers, you last. obviously is my local uh, pub. And yeah. I love it here. World of Beer UCF. Woo. I guess because I'm the nerdy girl I am, I need to plug trivia on Sunday nights at World of Beer. Oh, yes, you do. Never has come up on this podcast because Never. why would it? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, trivia every Sunday night. I think night. I mentioned every single one of our specials on the Except last episode. Trivia, right? <laughs> <laughs> 8.30 p.m. on Sundays with Missing Link Entertainment. Yeah, Matt. There we yeah, go. Matt. Go, yep. Matt. It's always a good time. He nope. puts on a good show. He's he not does. even paying me for this plug. How about that? Well, he, he's, he's not paying us either. <laughs> he better give you some free trivia points. <laughs> yeah. I want a free beer shot coupon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm going I'm to plug the homebrew event because it's. I think it's a great idea, and it's going to be awesome. Uh, nothing like that is even around this area of Orlando, so we will be the first popping the homebrew cherry here. Um, it'll be a live event. I'm, I'm inviting a couple of people, see if they want to come out. Maybe get some brewer friends. Okay. To come out and support local, yeah. You know, instead of just being loyalty members or whoever, like have you know people we've met who actually brew for a living, you know, hang out and you know give scores and stuff. So yeah, we'll try and work that out on my end. Um, probably Matt from Mosquito County. I'll have to see if he wants to come down. Um, my buddy Bobby, Bobby, and see if he wants to come out and just hang out and Bobby Bowigans. Drink some home home brew and miggle, man. But yeah, I mean, last time I tried all the home brews when we went to Deland, and, and there's some stellar beers coming out of people's freaking garages. It's yeah. unbelievable. So I'm excited. I have a feeling a handful of them are going to be really, really good. I have a feeling that some guys from work are trying to put a brew together, and I think it's going to be terrible. So I hope they listen <laughs> to this. But we'll see. I mean, I'm the, sitting right here, Jeff. That's the fun part is is anybody can come and and. and we're going to cap it at about 20 brewers um, just because of sheer space. That's about all we have room for. But, um, you know, we're going to try to get as many people as we can to, to participate and have a good time. I mean, it's really dependent on the home brewers at this point. So if we can't get them signed up, then that'll be a problem. But I'm going to brew a beer. All right. We got one. There you go. You I'll guys have it. to compete with Mike and his uh, mango passion fruit wit. That I'm was not doing that. Killer. Mike's mango passion fruit wit was great. I tried Thank his. Thank you. Preston's at uh, at Deland. So just so you know, you you're in stiff competition here. <clears throat> well, Starfruit. I, yeah, she picked Preston's. I, I voted for yours, but <laughs> I like Preston's better. <laughs> so you but cheated. Jeff, but Jeff changed my vote, so oh, technically, I technically, I did vote for <laughs> Preston. <laughs> she told me that, and I said, "Nope, we're doing this true. I'm not he letting would not you let cheat." Me cheat. Yeah. So when she told me that the Starfruit <laughs> was her favorite, I, upset. I <laughs> crossed hers off and I put it on on Preston's. All right. Preston, if you're listening, my, I'm an honest judge. On the other hand, my friend that was with me voted for yours. Yeah, so they just Legit. washed each other out. So, yeah, exactly. Out, yeah. We didn't count so at all. I, I've decided on my beer I'm going to brew for the homebrew. It's going to be an apricot cream ale. Interesting. You've been all about Whoa. the apricot lately. I know. Intracoastal blew my mind. That was a great jefe. Yeah. That was a jefe, right? Yep. Unbelievable. So I'm doing an apricot cream ale. That's all I've gotten so far. All right. I'm not going to do one. For, it's going to be I'm Vanilla. Thinking possibly cranberries, too, but I haven't fully decided. But there's oh, gonna my be apricot, cranberries, and vanilla. Two or, there's going to be two or three total flavors in it, and then we'll see how it goes. But that's what I'm bringing. I, I don't just, know if I'm going to enter it in or not. We'll see. We'll see once we get closer to the event. I might just have it just to fucking give it away. That would be fun. Sure. So why not? Cool. So anyway, that's what I'm plugging. All right. So that's so, it. We're wrapping that's it, it up. We're wrapping it up. 
All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in to another episode at the bar. I'm going to sign off because I tried to sign in and I didn't do a good job of it. So I'm going to sign off. Till next week. Cheers. 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 Have a great fucking week. <laughs> you want intro? I don't know. I'm do scared. You want, do you want to wait? I'm scared. Are you scared? I'll do it. You're going to do it one, one episode. You'll do it. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of At The Bar Podcast. Another extremely awesome episode. That's my line. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you do it. All right. I got nervous. <laughs>